Hello and welcome to FFRF's Ask an Atheist. I am Liz Cavell. I am Associate Counsel at the Freedom from Religion Foundation. I am coming to you live from the Stephen Uhl Friendly Atheist Studio here in Free Thought Hall. That's our headquarters in Madison, Wisconsin. And this week we are talking about the recent reemergence of our old friend Satanic Panic. We're going to discuss uh, Sam Smith's Satanic Grammy performance, all the kerfuffle over Rihanna's Super Bowl performance, um, and also the emergence of after school Satan clubs around the country and the just absolute panic that they inspire. So, Joining me today via Skype is fellow FFRF attorney Chris Line, who's been looking into some of the recent hysteria. Hi, Chris. Hey, Liz. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I tested positive for COVID yesterday, so I can't be with you in the studio, but I'm glad to uh, still be here to discuss this issue. Yeah, it's always fun. Um, it never fails to rear its ugly head, um, this crazy moral panic around Satanism and uh, Satan-inspired uh, displays of culture and entertainment. So, um, as always, we want your questions on this topic, and you can ask them in the comments below, or you can just send an email to askanatheist at ffrf.org. And remember, FFRF is a 501c3 nonprofit partisan organization, so we do not and cannot take sides in partisan elections, and we don't endorse any such views that might be expressed here. Yeah, so let's start with the Sam Smith performance, right? So this took place at the Grammys recently, and um, the I am not the pop culture uh, expert here at FFRF, but Chris, you're pretty uh, down with the kids. This happened at the Grammys. It was like Unholy, which is a, you know, theming of a song that, uh, or a duet between um, Sam Smith and another performer. They are both queer performers, which I'm sure is related to the reaction to the performance. But basically, right, they were costumed in like satanic devil type garb, very campy, very like, yeah, we have a clip. So let's just yeah. take a look. <laughs> See if you're scared. Yeah, so you can kind of see how people might have seen some Satan in there uh, if they really try to use their imagination. Um, but yeah, this this was uh, a performance. Um, it got a lot of uh, criticism. Uh, a lot of people, obviously Christians, saying, oh, how can you have Satan on TV? Um, it was discussed by uh, various people in the media. Um, I think Pierce Morgan was one person who had brought it up. Um, Ted Cruz commented, this is evil, as you just saw. Um, and, and Liz Wheeler, who he's commenting on top of, says, don't fight the culture wars, they say. Meanwhile, demons are teaching your kids to worship Satan. I could throw up. Um, so I, I think, mean, yeah. This is just my favorite, like, iteration of satanic, pan you know, moral panic, because it is so dumb. It is literally adults, adult entertainers in costumes that are like on par with something that my kid might wear on Halloween. And people and conservative media are absolutely losing their mind. Uh, let's see what Piers Morgan had to say. It's hard to keep up with Sam Smith's identities, but last night's Grammys, uh, they, as Smith now prefers to be called, identified as Satan. The performance riled many viewers, especially amongst the American uh, Christian fraternity, which are 210 million in America. Senator Ted Cruz said it was evil. Oh, my stars. Um, that is, you know, breaking news being covered by uh, Pierce Morgan and then obviously not so subtle 
uh, transphobia just kind of laced in there. Um, yeah, it's not that confusing. He, uh, <laughs> Sam, uh, they, Sam Smith, identifies as non-binary. It's, it's not that hard to keep up with. Uh, it's just <laughs> that's what they present as. So I, yeah, it's not that hard. Um, uh, as, as I alluded to, Ted Cruz had tweeted, and Marjorie Taylor Greene also uh, tweeted about the performance. Um, she took a slightly different tact um, and was focused not just on the Satanism, but on the um, fact that uh, fi after the performance, Pfizer came up, Pfizer was a sponsor. So she said the Grammys featured Sam Smith's demonic performance and was sponsored by Pfizer. And the Satanic Church now has an abortion clinic in North, uh, New Mexico that requires its patients to perform a Satanic ritual before services. American Christians need to get to work. Um, so she alluded to there to, you know, the Satanic Temple just opened its abortion like we're not going to discuss that as a part of the things today, but since Marjorie Taylor Greene brought it up, we might as well just right. chop that up. And like <laughs> the idea is to, again, this is what every time we see satanic panic in different times and places, it always sort of had, or especially like recently, it has this thread of it's, it's all the things that you hate about non-Christian, you know, civil society. It's the, the devil's behind it all. It's abortion. It's um, non-binary people. It's trans, you know, it's trans people living as themselves. It's all these things that you hate are um, evidence of the devil. And mm -hmm. that's uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene's tack, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And important to note that, uh, yeah, the one it's Sam Smith and then um, with it, with them in the performance is Kim Petras, who was the right. first trans um, artist to win a Grammy there. So, yeah, that's sort of the theme of the whole thing. The song is called Unholy. This isn't like some song that is not related to this sort of thing. And they're just throwing the devil and satanic imagery in there. This was a very intentional choice related to the song. This was an artistic endeavor. Um, We'd actually tweeted out in response to a Christian criticizing this. Um, you know, they said, if as a Christian you think we're reaching when we talk about dominance and normalization of Satan worship and pop music, you need discernment. Sam Smith's performance at the Grammy last night was satanic, gory. No, it's not art. It's symbolic of who they serve. Uh, F of Ref responded, it's art. Satan isn't real. Grow up. Um, it is art. You know, you can have a choice of whether it's good art or not. That's, you know, a oh, right. subjective personal opinion. But you can't really argue that this isn't just artistic expression at the Grammys honoring the artistic expression of, of artists. So kind of silly to overreact to that. Totally silly. And even, you know, Sam Smith facing personal backlash. He was like heckled uh, in New York City. Yeah, we have a clip of that, I think. Oh, boy. You belong in hell. Sam Smith belongs in hell. You demonic, twisted, sick bastards. Leave the kids alone, you sick First record. Yeah. That was totally normal behavior by a very uh, normal, mature adult. Um, yeah. Also, this leads to a ton of FCC complaints, right? So yep. people call up the FCC and say, yeah, like, how could you put, I'm sitting here watching the Grammys, and now I'm really mad that I saw people in costumes I didn't like. How yeah, could you put like, this on TV? Right, you can see some of the ones on your screen. This performance was satanic and, and can increase violence against Christians. Yo, boy. Sam Smith performed a raunchy, anti-Christian performance that mocked everything Christians hold dear. Sam was wearing devil horns on stage. Sam oh, no. did an exclusive performance with pentagrams and Satanism portrayed. Sam Smith's performance was indecent and satanic. I'll be canceling my television service due to this. Oh, boy. Course, yeah, it's just, I don't understand. This. There was nothing anti-Christian about the performance. Uh, it, you know, certainly had satanic imagery, but for the majority of people, I guess I shouldn't say majority of people, fortunately, the majority of people in this country probably do believe in Satan, but... For us rational people, Satan just isn't real. It's not a real threat. So uh, any imagery invoking Satan is not something to really be worried about. Yeah, well, it's sort of this idea that, like, Satan is what's behind all of these other things that are ruining um, Christian society, right? Like, yeah. Satan is... Like, this would, I think, be a slightly different... Um, 
slightly different reaction. You know, I think it's 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 pronounced by the fact that like Sam Smith is a queer person and uh, so is Kim Petras. You know, like these are trans, non non-binary performers just, you know, saying screw it to um, traditional, you know, Christian yeah. culture and think, mores and just doing their thing. Yeah, what you're describing, I think, is best articulated, actually, in a response. So in response to Candace Owen commenting on this, one of the backup dancers from that video actually uh, made a TikTok that kind of gets right to the point of what you're talking about. And uh, we have that clip. What happens when you get to Hollywood that they basically say, OK, now you just have to do a demonic ritual to prove. <laughs> All right, Candace, this is coming from one of the dancers who was in this satanic ritual. Must I remind you that for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, queer people have been associated with everything satanic and demonic and that for hundreds of years, you have been telling us that we're going to go to hell. I was a child when I realized that millions of people on this planet want me unalived because of my queerness. And now we finally have a space in Hollywood and you get mad when we associate ourselves with these symbols, but in a positive, fabulous way. <laughs> How many times are you going to take the bait? Seriously. The fact that you associate all these symbols with evil and queerness just highlights your homophobia. And I really hope you read a book one day. <laughs> yeah, that pretty much gets to the heart of it, right? It has everything to do with responding to um, you know, trans, it, you know, publicly embracing trans performers and queer performers. Um, and that's, and like Hollywood, you know, is kind of code for that secular acceptance of these, um, non-traditional kind of morals. Um, so there clearly was like satanic imagery, right? Like that was the theme of the performance of Sam Smith at the Grammys. But we also saw claims of like Satan being behind Rihanna's halftime show, which seemed a bit more dubious. So let's look at her performance clip and see if we can find Satan. Well, she was wearing red. She was so. wearing red. She was that, dancing. Really? Um, she was performing while, like, quite pregnant, um, which, as a mom, sounds like hell. But other than that, I didn't see much Satan in that. But some people did. Um, there was a tweet claiming that she was wearing a pentagram. That was debunked. Um, and then there was a tweet and like a bizarre rant from the MAGA host Grant Stinchfield. We have a clip of that. There's the tweet. Oh my goodness, it's a pentagram. Yeah. Wait, no, it's a belt buckle. Nah. Yeah, exactly. Then of course, there was the halftime show. This was out of control to me. You talk about kids, right? Watching an overly sexualized halftime show from Rihanna. Play some of it. Now, besides her dancers all looking like Chinese spy balloons, I want you to think of the biblical perspective of what is happening there, okay? She's dressed in red, and she falls from the sky, surrounded by people dressed in white, like angels. Do we know the story from the Bible? When Satan fell from heaven, and he brought down those fallen angels with him? That's exactly what played out on our screens. This is Cuckoo Bananas. That was on TV on a cable news program. Um, there's a biblical, the biblical view. This is just like the falling of Satan um, because she's wearing red and she's surrounded by white dressed performers that look like spy balloons. Oh my gosh, it's everything. Yeah, it's crazy that everything has to go to Satan, you know, like. That's I, a stretch. I wouldn't agree with the issue, you know, I wouldn't agree necessarily with the take, but like if you have a take that's, oh, this 
provocative dancing was inappropriate or something. Well, I think it was fine, but that's at least a rational, you know, something you can argue over. But to have to take it to Satan always, like it can't just be provocative dancing. It must be <laughs> satanic. It must be, you know, it's put in religious terms is just crazy. Well, it just does go to show, though, that like, like, it's not just us harping on cr this Christian nationalist resurgence and cr white Christian nationalist resurgence um, on the ultra conservative right because or religious right because this is why you see things put in these religious terms right it's like this it's the the moral the secular morals that are not in line with traditional Christian morals like there's no it's not like He's just using a biblical story to illustrate some great point. Like, it makes no sense. What he's talking about is totally bonkers. But it's trying to make his viewers think, like, oh, this is, li like, exactly what we were warned about in the Bible. This is anti-Christian, secular culture invading our living rooms. While we're just trying to watch, you know, with our kids, <laughs> that, that great, wholesome institution, the NFL. Yeah. And, you know, like we're knowing it, whether it's, you know, something more clearly actually with some satanic stuff like a Sam Smith's performance or a stretch like Rihanna's, you can see that clearly Satan has a creative visceral reaction for Christians and those type of people. And that's why, it, you know, groups like the Satanic Temple are able to use it so successfully, because just mentioning Satan uh, just sends people into a tizzy. It just... Uh, makes people irate. Um, so that's one reason why we've now been seeing uh, kerfuffle over uh, After School Satan in a few different schools. Now this, I think After School Satan has been around for a couple of years now, but uh, only recently has it really been hitting the news. Um, we have a clip that kind of explains what After School Satan is for those who don't know. If we begin tonight in the Lehigh Valley where controversy has erupted over an after-school club sponsored by the Satanic Temple. Saucon Valley School District approved the after-school Satan Club. Now the district has canceled classes at all schools tomorrow. Newswatch 16's Jack Colkin is in Northampton County tonight. A flyer for the club says that students will be learning critical thinking, problem solving, and also compassion, something people we spoke with say that they are fine with. They just don't want the after school Satan club to be involved. Satan is not an evil guy. He wants you to learn and question why. People in the borough of Hellertown were shocked when they learned that the after school Satan club would soon be calling the Suckin Valley School District home. Really could not believe that it was allowed to ex actually, actually exist. You know, I, I would think that some higher authority would, would you know, interfere, would, would allow something like that to happen. There are 10 after school Satan clubs across the country. The one in Northampton County will be the first in Pennsylvania. Um, usually they found out that there is a good news club or a similar evangelical uh, Bible club operating out of their schools. And usually, you know, they come to their own conclusion that they want an alternative um, to be able to send their child if they don't necessarily, um, you know, identify with uh, being an evangelical Christian or want their child to particularly attend that club. The district sent a message to parents this week notifying them that the club had been approved reading in part consistent with the law and criteria set out as the SVSD board policy and regulations. The district has approved an organization known as the After School Satan Club to host gatherings after school hours in the Suckin Valley Middle School. I think the name is throwing people off. I've raised four kids in, in my years and I've taught them how to solve problems. We didn't need to use any names to do it. Don Mills of Hellertown learned about the club after a flyer was posted to a community Facebook page. Be honest, I, it seems like most people on social media were against the idea. So I don't know if it's going to last or not. I really have no idea. In my opinion is I hope it doesn't. With word continuing to spread around the area, Mills expects more parents to speak up. I'm sure the next school board meeting is going to have a lot of visitors over this thing. The After School Satan Club will have their first meeting here at the middle school. It is set to take place on March 8th. That will be the first meeting of three that will go on throughout the rest of the school year. So yeah. I just want to point out that the Satanic Temple, that was, that was so funny, especially the jingle. Um, 
The Satanic Temple is an organization, um, right, that is a non true Satan worshiping uh, organization. It's a, you know, a sort of non-theist, non-religious organization that is using the Satanic Temple label to um, kind of make this point and generate just this reaction, right? To like, to give that like knee jerk um, reaction to religious folks that we non-religious people feel when religion is so embraced by our government institutions. So like the, the whole reason why this club is, is operating in this fashion is because in these same schools, in public school districts, they have these policies that schools can be used as an, as an open forum and, you know, after school hours for non-school affiliated clubs. And what ends up happening is they become recruiting grounds for evangelists like the Good News Clubs and uh, other religious clubs that are um, targeting young students for evangelism and using, you know, the, the public schools as a mission field. That's where kids already are. And because districts choose to open themselves up as a public forum, which means anyone can come, we're not um, endorsing any of these clubs or messages. We are just a conduit for passing on the information and our facilities are available without discrimination based on viewpoint. Um, and that's what allows and, and really compels the after school Satan club to be able to operate in public schools on the same terms as religious clubs. Um, and the point is to demonstrate to the community that public schools are really not the place to um, have religions duking it out uh, for uh, for our youngest, most vulnerable schools, right? Or kids. This, these are public schools. This is not the place to introduce this like divisive idea, which is religion, right? Religion is something that is really personal, really private, and that we shouldn't have our public schools, you know, recruiting kids for. Um, so that's the whole point is to give that knee jerk reaction. And of course it works, but then the lesson and the nuance is obviously lost on all of these people in the community. Yeah. And it makes clear what we've kind of already known that like, even if it's after school, if you are having a club, it it's, feels like it's endorsed by the school, people associated with the school. This is an argument we've made about the Good News Club. The Supreme Court uh, came out the other way and said, no, actually, it's not an endorsement of the school. You have to allow good news clubs if, you know, you're having after school clubs. Um, but then, yeah, when we turn the tables like this and have the satanic clubs, it becomes very clear uh, to people that, whoa, this, how is that possible? Like, how can they be having a satanic club at the school? Well, that's the same reaction we had to the good news club. <laughs> how can you be bringing Christians in to go after students in school? And they're like, well, hold on. This has nothing to do with the school. We're just letting them do it. But when you, you know, it's flipped to the other side with the satanic clubs, they're like, well, this is unacceptable. Our school can't have any satanic club in it. You know, Christian club, totally fine. They, for sure, they should be able to come in, but it's different when the satanists do it. Um, right. So, so like one way yeah. to make the, make it so that the, this after school Satan club, which is by the way, actually not unlike the good news club is not a ministry or an evangelism for like a true biblical type of like Satanism, whatever that may be. It's just a, the, it's just a triggering name for a sort of secular, rational, you know, skeptics kind of a science club for kids, right? Teaching critical thinking, teaching, um, you know, social emotional stuff and, and teaching just like, fun secular activities for kids after school that are non-religious to counter the evangelistic clubs that already operate at these schools. And the way to do away with it, that guy in the clip that said, I think some higher power should intervene. I don't, wasn't sure if he was talking about God or like the superintendent, but like the way to get the uh, secular powers that be to disallow after school Satan club is to stop opening its schools as mission fields for all non-school clubs or not just not non-school clubs, but completely unaffiliated clubs. Like these are not extracurricular. They're not, they're non-curricular. They are private organizations just hosting their 
um, meetings inside public schools and sending their flyers home through the public school, you know, flyer medium. And that's how they're getting the attention and the eyeballs of these kids and families. So yeah. if they shut it down and make school and flyers and school buildings just for school stuff, then it's problem solved. Right. And we'll get into kind of the best, like, we're actually going to see the dichotomy between the schools at one school district holding, like, handling it correctly in another school district not handling it correctly but all that that clip and the kerfuffle was all about a club that hasn't met yet uh, it you know that they didn't actually meet at all this is just about the fact that they're going to be allowed to meet um we do have a short clip about a club in virginia that actually has met finally after much um, issue we can show you that chesapeake elementary school letting out early tuesday after a bomb threat hours earlier I was scared. Um, I was nervous. Um, I was just trying to get here as fast as I could. This email forcing the building to evacuate and put into lockdown. Five-year-old Harrison says he waited inside the gym. Police and firemen was checking the whole school. Were you scared? Um, I wasn't scared. But, um, I was just like talking to my friend Luna. After a sweep with bomb sniffing dogs, nothing was found. It's definitely a nerve wracking situation. It's unclear what the motive behind the threatening email was, but the fire marshal's office, who's leading the investigation, says it references the after school Satan Club. The club, which met at the school recently, has been the focus of several heated debates. Just really sad that that's where we are right now is that a primary school with such young children um, could receive a threat like this. That email calling the Satan Club evil, saying you promote devil worship and un-Islamic values. The email goes on to say bombs were put into homes of the superintendent and a volunteer of that club. The kids have nothing to do with all of this, so I don't understand why things have to keep happening at schools. Couldn't have said yeah. it better myself. So that club in Virginia uh, went through a lot of hoops to even get to, to be in. At first, they weren't going to, you know, there was discussion about whether it should be allowed. There were these rules put in place. They were trying to force extra security fees on the club because there was concerns about safety, um, not because of the people in the Satanic Club, but because Christians and other people in the community might hurt the school or children or in some way attack the um, Satanic Club. So the Satanic Club was going to have to put up some kind of money because of the extra security that was going to be necessary for them to exist. That was all prior, I think, to what happened was that there was a bomb threat Tuesday at uh, BM Williams Primary School. And then once again on Wednesday, so both schools were threatened. Um, the um, ACLU, ACLU lawyer was threatened. The Satanic Temple, uh, its own building was threatened. It had to be cleared out. And um, there was, um, yeah, multiple bomb threats related just to this this club in Virginia. That, this club in Virginia that um, was, uh, you know, that took place just, just because it was Satanic. Um, there were these bomb threats. And this is uh, so crazy because it's literally just a community reaction to the fact that these clubs are being allowed to uh, operate in schools on equal terms. Like I explained before, the only reason we're here is because these are schools that allow religious missionary clubs to operate after schools. And this is like, you've heard of the heckler's veto. This is like a bomber's veto. These are like people that are like, I'm going to call in bomb threats to elementary schools because I can't stand the word Satan uh, in an after school club. It is crazy. Yeah. And so that earlier um, clip we saw discussing the Pennsylvania club that has not met yet, um, that's in Saucon Valley, um, they didn't receive a bomb threat. They received a shooting threat um, last week um, around the same time. Um, and now, uh, in that case, a 20-year-old North Carolina man has been charged um, with making that phone call and um, disrupting the school day. Um, he had left a voicemail message. Uh, I'm going to come in there and shoot everybody uh, after hearing about the After School Satan Club on Facebook. So this was a, someone in North Carolina saw that the club existed in Pennsylvania. You know, so this wasn't a local community member, not that that would make it okay for them to threaten the school. Right. This, is, this literally is literally someone who saw this on yeah. Facebook. Yeah. And the worst part is the school district then came out after and said, 
we're not going to allow the Satan Club now because someone has threatened um, the school. They're not blaming it on the club, uh, which is awful from a legal standpoint. We know it's a terrible thing to say, you know, just this idea that, oh, I could hear that there's a club across the country. If I call and make a threat, then that club could be forced to go away, that they can use that as an excuse to get rid of the club. Um, So the superintendent had come out and said, uh, last Friday, you know, well, we're not going to allow this club anymore because of the disruption that's been caused. But once again, the club is not causing the disruption. The disruption is coming from the reaction to the club from Christians who are um, making threats, or I think, I'm not sure of the religion of the per, the man who was uh, arrested for this. But either way, religious people making threats against the satanic club and now the result is that the satanic club needs to go away. No mention of doing anything about the Good News Club. Presumably they'll still be allowed to meet because we're not calling in bomb threats on the Good News Club, so they get to keep um, going. But because they're willing to make threats against the satanic club, satanic club's going to have to go away. Right. It's, it's unbelievably unfair, but of course the thing to do and the lawful thing, the thing in line with the like First Amendment free speech concerns is to shut down the forum, which means disallow non-school clubs at public schools. It's not that hard or controversial, just like the parent in that clip said, like, why do we have this stuff happening at our kids' elementary schools? Just knock it off. This has nothing to do with the kids. Yeah, and I do, I mean, I, I wanna say I feel for some of the people in these situations, including, like I said, the superintendent who made the wrong decision in Pennsylvania. Um, she had told the news that, uh, after approving the club, she received messages stating that she should not be around children, that she's woke and spineless, that she's disregarding the Constitution, that she worships Satan, that she should be ashamed to call herself a mother, wow. um, that her two small children and her should burn in hell. That was the reaction to her approving the club. So it's not surprising when the opportunity comes up that she is going to revoke the club. Uh, given the horrific things that are being said to her. Um, obviously, I think that's the wrong reaction to give in to these people who are attacking you. Um, I think instead it's more important for you to stand up and say, hey, if these are the people I'm siding with by not allowing the club, the people who are telling me that I'm going to burn in hell and you know, making threats against me, I think it's more important that you stand up for this club then and say, hey, they get to be here. This isn't a school-endorsed club. We're just allowing them the same as we love the Good News Club. Um and like you said, the, the, there is a solution for it. Um, if you know you don't want the Satanic Club, then you need to just disallow all clubs. That was something that the Chesapeake School considered uh, Monday night. Um, a lot of people came in to that meeting. Um, obviously, they had just had those two bomb threats um, against the school. So they were discussing what they're going to do about the Satanic Club. And they actually did the right thing. Um, they realized that that was their choices. We're either going to disallow all clubs or we're gonna allow them. And in a 5-4 vote um, on Monday night, they decided that non-exempt clubs can continue using school facilities. Now, they did make some changes. Um, I think these are good changes. Um, A, they are charging fees now before it was free for these clubs to use it. They're not gonna do some fees to offset costs. But also, they're going to be um, requiring that clubs uh, meet after, I believe it's 6 p.m. So, Originally, yeah. So originally right now, clubs were basically meeting right after school. Good yep. News Club and then obviously the Satanic Club would meet right after school. Um, now this new policy is going to say, nope, you wait till 6 p.m. These are not going to be affiliated with the school, which is the thing that we've always said. When we write letters about the Good News Club, we tell them, don't allow these clubs to be right after school. That's how they're going after these kids and targeting them. You know, if someone really wants to go to Good News Club that bad, then they'll come back at 6 and go. But don't allow them to take the convenience of, Oh, I don't have to pick up my kid till six if I, you know, until after, till later after school. If I just make them go to this religious club, well, I guess they can go to, you know, the Good News Club after school, and that'll buy me some time. I don't have to rush over after school hours, you know, allowing for, um, you know, the school day to bleed into this religious club. So, and again, um, like that's part of the um, the setup that they count on that Good News Club counts on to, like capture these kids where they are, right? They're they're all coming, they're all at dismissal in this place at this time, that's where we need to be. Because, 
you know, we can function as a sort of like wraparound care for parents who need us or, you know, who need that um, resource and we can evangelize these kids. Yeah. And I'll say that is a, the view of both groups. Um, the news report notes that supporters of the after school Satan club also pleaded with the school board to allow them to meet during normal after school hours. So even the Satanic club wants to meet right after school, which makes sense. That's the time when kids are there. I mean, that'll get you the most participation. But I was our point would be that it's not about getting the most participation. It's about giving kids a real choice in whether to go. Um, and if you want to hold a club uh, at six o'clock after school hours, then, you know, whatever you're renting the school, this is not a school affiliated thing and people can do what they want. But if you are kind of blurring the lines and sticking it right after the school day, it does get complicated, especially when teachers get involved. I know that happens a lot with good news clubs. Okay. Teachers will be running it or joining in or participating or watching over. And now, you know, you're going there after school and your teacher's there, you're at the school in a religious club, your teacher's there. It happened right after school. For young kids, obviously that really makes it seem like it's associated with the school. No child is gonna think, oh, this is a completely separate thing. They're not gonna understand the nuances there. Right, it's about creating that separation so that these clubs, whether it's after school Satan or good news clubs or any non-school clubs, is not getting to like harness the governmental power of the public school system and the public school day to advance, you know, whatever its agenda might be. And if that's a religious agenda, um, then it's all the more problematic because the establishment clause is still a thing, despite um, what we hear from the federal courts. Yeah, and we'll have to see how, um, like I said, there's a two different ways these schools have handled it. Obviously, I think that the Virginia Club handled it correctly in, you know, making broad-based policies that affect every religious club. That is what they need to do. That's how you don't discriminate. That's how you abide by our Constitution. Um, it remains to be seen what, um, you know, the Satanic Temple is going to do now with that club in Pennsylvania that's now, you know, closing them down while presumably still allowing the Good News Club. Um, and hopefully they're able to fight back against that because, like I said, that's ridiculous. Um, all, they all need to be treated the same. And you shouldn't allow this sort of, I don't know, bomber's veto that if we're going to be willing to call in a, a bomb threat about your club, you don't get to meet, but the Christian club still does. And we're going to try to justify that. That's not how this works. That's not how it should work. No, the answer to that is, okay, like, this is why we can't have nice things. Nobody gets to meet in, on school property, and that includes evangelists. And that is, from my perspective, all good and well for we secular uh, people and is just a, um, a loss to the evangelism of groups like the Good News Club. But if, yeah. if that's how it has to be, that's how it has to be. And that's how it should be. Is yeah. that what the Virgi Virginia district was voting between shutting down the forum and keeping it open and uh, accessible? Yep, they realized what their two choices were. So four then, people voted to shut down the forum. Yeah, I think so, yep. Um, Shame. And there were a lot of people, I know, and it, it, like I said, I think that's the better solution. A lot of people spoke out at that meeting in favor of it, made some really good points. Um, one that said, I'd like to know on what grounds that you rescind it truly because it's a violation of our constitutional right to have one religious group and not allow them all. Um, or sorry, this is from the Saquon Valley, um, Pennsylvania one. Um, they also brought up at that meeting, um, we have a lot of questions and concerns with school, what our kids are coming in contact with, if people have hidden agendas. I say, let's just nix it all. I think we have enough on our plate to just focus on education. Um, and obviously we agree with that. They also said, someone said, any kind of religion should just be out of public schools. That would just be helpful for all parties. If you believe in God, you go to church. If you believe in anything else, just go somewhere else. There are other <laughs> places you can go, pray, worship, and do whatever you guys do. But all religion should be out of the public schools. And uh, obviously that's our take on it. Right. It's, it's just this rational, there's just, just such a dichotomy between people who, like, just the the word and the image of, like, Satan just causes their brains to break. <laughs> like, they just lose their minds. And then people who are just kind of, like, immune to believing that, you know, Satan as an image or a thing, like, 
is this boogeyman. And so the rational course is so obvious to some. Um, and then everyone else who's just a panic is like a euphemism for what Satan imagery inspires in these people and communities and just become these mobs. Yeah, it's crazy they're not able to just put themselves in the other in our shoes and see, oh, the way I'm reacting to the Satanic Club being announced, that's how non-Christians feel when the Good News Club comes into town and says, we're going to take over your schools. It's yeah. the exact same situation, but they just don't get it because obviously they support the Good News Club. Well, I'm going to field some questions from the audience real quick, Chris, before I let you go. Um Here's one that we kind of sort of answered, but are after-school Satan clubs in danger of having legislation posed to restrict them from taking place in schools? Um, so now that I'm reading this, I could see like a governor totally weighing in on something this stupid um, and petty, or, or not that governors pass legislation, but like someone at a state level that's not at the local school board level. But the more likely thing would be is a, is a local school board going to take action um, to restrict these clubs from schools. And like Chris and I, I guess, are kind of dancing up to the line about this, but I'll just say it to answer this question is that would violate the First Amendment, the free speech rights, the part of the First Amendment that the Supreme Court recognizes uh, still exists. Um, the free speech clause is what is in play here because um, these are government forums, right, public schools, places that are run by the government, and they can't just censor some speech and not censor other speech based on the viewpoint or, you know, the ideas that are being expressed there. So that's the, that is the pickle that these school boards are in. They can't take action that excludes the Satan Club's um, that doesn't also shut down schools um, to uh, ministries and evangelist clubs like Good News Clubs. That's what Chris and I are advocating, um, but that's the choice that these school boards face. And this, and state legislatures, you know, trying to take action and get involved or, you know, play politics would be faced with the same, um, the same constitutional restrictions and the same choices. Yeah, and that's the correct legal analysis, but it is important to note, um, as we're kind of going through here, uh, we've been noticing that uh, legislators this, this session are very willing to propose laws that are clearly unconstitutional on their face. Um, we've been addressing a lot of them, but there's just, they're, they're more than willing to, even though they know and everyone can tell them right away, hey, what you're proposing violates the Constitution, they still do it anyway. Um, and maybe that's not a terrible bet for them that the Supreme Court would change the Constitution or our constitutional views, um, unfortunately. But we're definitely seeing a lot of that, of bills being passed that are just blatantly unconstitutional in our face that are immediately going to get, um, you know, lawsuits filed as soon as they, if if they're passed. Um, but I think in that vein, something could definitely, like you said, that it could happen where a state decides to try to come up with some sort of legislation to stop satanic clubs. It would be unconstitutional, but obviously we'd have to fight that out in the courts then after that. Yeah. Here's another question, Chris, that I hate. Um, do you think that Satanists will have to soften their appearance in a way in order to prevent being targeted by religious extremist threats of violence? Um, I love the idea that we should all make ourselves less offensive so people don't try to kill us. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, I think that the Satanic Temple, they, they have their thing. I don't think they're going to be softening. Um, right, it's the you, whole point, right? The whole right. point. And I love that, like, cartoon devil, like, emblem that they mocked up to go on these flyers because, like, the whole point is just, like, what is triggering to people that believe in this, like, ghost, angel, demigod? And it's, like, it's, like, half like just funny and silly and half just like, I guess, super triggering. I mean, the guy's wearing a bow tie. That's so funny. Um, and that's like the whole point. The whole point is to write, ignite that reaction um, in people that just cannot be made to see the, the, the problem with government endorsing a religious viewpoint. Um, so... Yeah. And, a, and it would part, kind of it would kind of um, take away the whole point. And B, I'm just like not in favor of softening your appearance so that people won't um, threaten to blow you up. 
Right, they won't. And I guess what I, I would notice, uh, we already have that softer version, which of course is FFRF. Uh, <laughs> People do, still want to blow us up. Of course, but I'm saying we still do a lot. We do a lot of the same things the Satanic Temple does. We try to get involved in forums that are, um, you know, open there. We try to, you know, become another thing there. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the stats on whether we're getting more or less threats. But you're right. We do get threats. We get a lot of the same things. But also, I've noticed we just don't get the same reaction that the Satanists do. Right. Like there's something sure. about right. Satan that just like inspires this reaction that is different. Um, and uh, again, like that is the whole point of um, TST and, and that is the whole angle that they are taking when they're entering these public forum. Right. So if we're in a forum and we put up our atheist flag, yeah, people are going to freak out because they always will. Atheism freaks people out too. But it's not going to have the same reaction as then when that satanic flag goes up and people just start losing their minds. Um, so I think, uh, I don't think they're going to be softening and I don't think that they should. Well, that is all we have in questions, Chris. And I think we've um, gone on long enough about satanic panic. I feel super confident that it will rear its ugly head in some more of our uh, after school club complaints and in our secular culture soon. So maybe more on this topic then. Um, but that concludes Ask an Atheist for this week. Thanks for helping out, Chris, even though you are sick and home. So this week on our broadcast TV show, Free Thought Matters, our guest is Jonathan Larson. It, he's the executive editor of the new news organization, Young Turks. He's done excellent reporting on National Prayer Breakfast and the shadowy organizations that are involved with it. And here's a preview. The Russians and others appreciate the love about the U.S. culture is that anything under the mantle of religion, the media, law enforcement, and politicians, they're all reluctant and loath to, to apply any sort of scrutiny, which means you can do a lot more under the cloak of religion uh, in the U.S. than you can in other countries where they're a little bit more, shall we say, agnostic about religion, where they say, I, I don't care that you believe whatever it is you believe. You're an organization. You're doing things. We're, we want some transparency here. That's not as true in the United States. You can see Free Thought Matters on TV stations all across the U.S. and also on FFRF's Facebook and YouTube channels. Christine Henneberg. And don't miss Free Thought Radio. This week, Annie Laurie and Dan's guest will be Christine Henneberg, an abortion doctor and the author of Boundless. You can find out how to hear Free Thought Radio at FFRF.org slash radio. Um, be sure to catch the We Descent podcast featuring me and Rebecca Markert and Allison Gill, all secular women attorneys. Uh, this month's episode dropped last week. We talk about the ministerial exception. You've heard about it, but what is it? Where does it come from? What does the Supreme Court think about it? Find the podcast at we-descent.org, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you want more information about the Freedom From Religion Foundation, you can check us out on our website at ffrf.org. If you're a member, thank you. If not, please join us. See you next week. Thanks again for watching FFRF's Ask an Atheist.